I enlisted in the army to defeat the Islamist terrorists who attacked us on 9-11 and to keep our country safe. I've served now for over 21 years, deployed to war zones in both the Middle East and Africa, put my life on the line for the freedom and safety of the American people, and still serve today. Now, my own government has placed me on a secret terror watch list, targeting me as a potential domestic terror threat. Why? Political retaliation. I spoke out about how dangerous Kamala Harris would be to our nation if she were to be elected as president and why the American people should be very concerned. Now, just before boarding a flight on July 23rd, my husband and I were pulled aside for additional TSA screening. Our electronics were swabbed for traces of explosives. And when we landed, my husband was pulled aside for another round of additional screening. On the next several flights that we took, our boarding passes were marked with the quad S and we were subjected to in-depth searches by the TSA every single time, each time taking 30 to 45 minutes, every inch of our body padded down, every item in our carry-on searched and swabbed for explosive residue. And sometimes, going through this all over again at the gate before being allowed to board the plane. Every time this happened, we were told by the TSA agent there, this is just a random selection. Now that might've been believable if it had happened just once or twice, but five, six, seven, eight times in a row, there's no way. On August 4th, federal air marshal whistleblowers came forward with very disturbing information. They revealed that I had been added to a secret terror watch list run by the TSA called Quiet Skies on July 23rd. This is the very same day my husband and I began to be subjected to those in-depth TSA searches. These are images of the TSA targeting package that the air marshals were given as part of their mission brief. I later learned that at least three air marshals were assigned to watch me every time I traveled in the airport and on the flight. TSA deployed explosive K9 detection teams and a TSA explosive specialist. Now, this is extreme by any measure. What were they looking for? What kind of threat did they think I posed? What were they afraid that I was gonna do? None of this made sense until I put all the pieces together. On July 21st, President Biden announced he was dropping out of the presidential race and endorsing Kamala Harris to be the Democratic nominee. On July 22nd, I did an interview with Fox News' Laura Ingram about how dangerous a potential Kamala Harris presidency would be for our country. Here's what I said. Foreign policy decisions are being made by unelected people in the military industrial complex who are profiting from us being in a constant state of war and the national security state that has more power to undermine our freedoms and liberties when we are in a state of war. Kamala Harris does not have the strength to stand up to the military industrial complex. The very next day on July 23rd, the TSA placed me on the Quiet Skies domestic terror watch list in what I can only describe as the ultimate betrayal. After putting my life on the line to defend the safety and security of the American people, the Harris-Biden regime has now labeled me a domestic terror threat. Why? They see me as a threat to their power. The Harris-Biden administration and Democrat elite have spent years weaponizing our law enforcement, our national security state, even enlisting the help of their friends in big tech and the mainstream propaganda media to retaliate against those who dare to criticize their actions and their policies, those they deem a threat to their power, because that's all they care about, power. On August 21st, the Congressional Committee on the Weaponization of the Federal Government launched an investigation into the TSA's clearly politically motivated actions against me to expose the truth. I am not the only political dissident the Harris-Biden regime is targeting. On Saturday, Christmas Eve of 2022, the IRS opened an investigation into independent journalist Matt Taibbi, just three weeks after he began publishing the Twitter files, which exposed the truth about the Democrats' collusion with Twitter to censor Americans online. They sent IRS agents unannounced to Matt Taibbi's home at the very moment he was testifying before the Select Committee on the Weaponization of the Federal Government, where he was warning the American people and members of Congress about the collusion between government and private enterprise to silence and censor Americans. We learned Twitter, Facebook, Google, and other companies developed a formal system for taking in moderation requests 
from every corner of government, from the FBI, the DHS, the HHS, DOD, the Global Engagement Center at State, even the CIA. For every government agency scanning Twitter, there were perhaps 20 quasi-private entities doing the same thing. A focus of this fast-growing network, as Mike noted, is making lists of people whose opinions, beliefs, associations, or sympathies are deemed misinformation, disinformation, or malinformation. That last term is just a euphemism for true but inconvenient. Undeniably, the making of such lists is a form of digital McCarthyism. Now, to take these extreme measures, you might imagine, well, hey, maybe Matt failed to file his taxes, or maybe he owed the IRS and the government a lot of money. No, that wasn't the case. The government actually owed him a lot of money. This was a case of retaliation and harassment, hoping that if they bullied and harassed him enough, he might stop exposing the truth. He did not. That same year, the Harris-Biden regime also targeted former FBI Special Agent Steve Friend. Now, Friend blew the whistle on the politicization of the FBI and the deployment of SWAT using extreme tactics to go after opponents of the Harris-Biden administration and their policies. Defying the Whistleblower Protection Act, the FBI wasted no time in retaliating against him. The FBI weaponized the security clearance processes to facilitate my removal from active duty within one month of my disclosures. In addition to an indefinite unpaid suspension, the FBI initiated a campaign of humiliation and intimidation to punish and pressure me to resign. In violation of HIPAA, individuals at the FBI leaked my private medical information to a reporter at the New York Times. I pray that all members consider the information I and my fellow whistleblowers present. You may think I'm a political partisan. You may think I am a grifter. You may think I'm a conspiracy theorist. It does not matter. Simply put, this committee should avoid te the temptation to impugn the character and the motivations of the messengers seated before you. Now, Terry Turchi, the FBI's first head of counterterrorism and a retired agent with over 30 years of frontline service in the FBI, stood up for Steve Friend's character and integrity, along with over 30 other FBI agents. Turchi said, quote, the FBI has been collapsed into nothing more than a police agency for the Democratic Party. Many of us feel that over the decades, we've seen the complete compromise of the Bureau. Now, sometimes the Harris-Biden administration uses their friends in the mainstream media to do their dirty work for them. Emmy Award-winning reporter Katherine Herridge, known for her in-depth reporting on the contents of Hunter Biden's laptop, faced multiple roadblocks by her higher-ups in her reporting at CBS. Yet she persevered. She stuck with the story. And shortly after being fired in what CBS called part of a major downsizing, CBS confiscated all of her notes, files, and reporting records in an unprecedented act that Catherine called journalistic rape. When the network of Walter Cronkite seizes your reporting files, including confidential source information, that is an attack on investigative journalism. When my records were seized, I felt it was a journalistic rape. Nothing short of political retaliation that according to Catherine, her sources were deeply afraid of. Quote, multiple sources said they were concerned that by working with me to expose government corruption and misconduct, they would be identified and exposed. But it isn't just journalists that the regime has targeted. Permanent Washington has demonstrated the true extent of its unchecked abuse of power when it tried to remove a duly elected president, Donald Trump, in his first term. In 2017, President Trump questioned the credibility of the FBI as they investigated him based on accusations of Russian collusion that the FBI already knew were false. Senator Chuck Schumer issued a chilling warning about what happens when someone dares to challenge the intelligence community. You take on the intelligence community, they have six ways from Sunday at getting back at you. So even for a practical, supposedly hard-nosed businessman, he's being really dumb to do this. What do you think the intelligence community would do if they were motivated I don't know, to? but I, from what I am told, they are very upset with how he has treated them and talked about them. Seven years later, and their abuse of power continues. This presidential cycle, the Harris-Biden regime weaponized the Secret Service against their political opponents, denying protection to Bobby Kennedy Jr., for example, for months 
in spite of the fact that he presented evidence of serious threats on his life and multiple break-ins at his home. What to speak of the tragic history of both his father and his uncle being assassinated. I'm the first candidate in history that has requested Secret Service protection since my dad's death, which is when they get, you know, they gave it to everybody. They have to give it to you 120 days out. They've given it to 44 candidates, basically everybody, 200 days, 300 days. I think Obama got it 541 days out. Jesse Jacks, people with a tiny fraction of my polling, I'm the first one that they've ever denied it to. That's and did they ever give you a reason? No. They put his life at risk because he had the audacity to challenge the Harris-Biden presidency. Just think about that. They even denied President Trump's multiple requests for increased security. And what happened as a result? A nearly successful assassination attempt on Donald Trump's life. Take a look at what happened. Days after President Trump survived this assassination attempt, still FBI Director Christopher Wray did his best to try to undermine the surging support for Trump by intentionally sowing baseless seeds of doubt in voters' minds. As I said, I think with uh, with respect to former President Trump, um, there's it, there's some question about whether or not uh, it's a bullet or shrapnel that you know that hit his ear. The Harris-Biden administration has demonstrated time and time again that they will not hesitate to weaponize law enforcement and the justice system against political opponents, foremost among them, the person who poses the greatest threat to their power, Donald J. Trump. They're waging this lawfare on multiple fronts, coming up with trumped up charges in the hopes that they could throw him in a jail cell before voters have a chance to head to the polls and vote for him. Whether through the Quiet Sky's secret domestic terror watch list, the Patriot Act being used to illegally surveil Americans, the IRS's targeting of conservatives, FBI SWAT teams kicking down the doors of peaceful pro-life protesters, FISA's illegal and warrantless surveillance of American citizens, and the FBI's targeting and watching quote unquote radical traditionalist Catholics as potential threats, the list goes on and on. The bottom line is, Everyday Americans are being watched and spied on by our own government. Why? Because those in power see us as a threat and they'll do whatever they deem necessary, brazenly abusing their power to destroy us, silence us, or even throw us in jail. They want to scare us into submission, to self-censor, to think twice before we dare criticize the Democrat elite, the Harris-Biden administration, the national security military industrial complex. I will not back down. We cannot back down. The American Center for Law and Justice is representing me as I take legal action to fight this unconstitutional retaliatory act against me and my family. We will fight to end this and all other secret terror watch lists that are being weaponized against thousands, maybe even tens of thousands of innocent Americans. No American deserves to live in fear of our own government. We must expose the truth about their abuse of power and hold them accountable. We're facing a critical election. Kamala Harris is the Democratic nominee, and she's proven she will continue to weaponize law enforcement and our national security state to go after political opponents. The propaganda media will continue to support her in her abuse of power. So those who truly believe in freedom, whether you're a Democrat, an independent, libertarian, or Republican, we must stand together now to defend our freedom and defeat Kamala Harris at the ballot box. Donald Trump has the strength, the backbone, and the willingness to take on the deep rod of corruption in our government, clean house, top to bottom, and hold those who are abusing their power accountable, wherever they may be.